Welcome to another video from explainingcomputers.com. This time we're going to build a mini ITX PC inside this, the My64 case, which has been supplied to review by my retro computer. And what this will allow us to do is to build a modern PC that looks just like a classic home micro. So let's go and get started. Right, here we have the My64, which is a new release by My Retro Computer of a case first sold in 2011 by a company called Commodore USA. So let's open this thing up. I think it's the biggest thing I've ever unboxed on this table. I think there's a little tag at the bottom and it should be straightforward to get into this thing. It just opens up. Oh yes, it's, it's so like the uh, boxes we had on these early home computers. Look at this. Instructions, stuff to uh, go through in a second, but ah, now this is, this is weird, isn't it? Because this is unboxing a brand new thing, but it looks like it's from decades ago. Let's get it out of the box like this. Somehow get this out of the way, rather bulky over there, and get rid of the ends like that and that. Oh, this is an exciting unboxing. Look at that. This is the my 64 and it feels so much like a computer from from yesteryear. This is I think a cherry Switched keyboard. Yes, beautiful feel on the keyboard full-size cursor keys. Great to see those This is this is very nice indeed And if we look at one end we can see what looks like a slimline DVD drive But which is actually an internal cradle for taking a two and a half inch drive into which will be fitting a two and a half inch SSD. And then on the other end, we find a three and a half inch bay panel currently fitted with a metal plate, which has got some holes for ventilation and a hole for fitting through the power jack, which we'll use to power the My64 from an external power supply. Although if you wish, you can fit a multi-format card reader here, which is also supplied with the case. Finally, around the back, we find a 40 millimeter cooling fan and also here an aperture which will take the I.O. shield from a mini ITX motherboard. So all of the computer connections for this system will end up sitting down here. So there we are, the My64. And the one thing I've not mentioned so far is the price, which at the time of making this video is $254 or £189 or €209. Euros. So this is clearly an expensive niche product, but one which does allow us to build a new modern computer in a retro case. Right, shall we now turn this into a functional computer? That would be an exciting thing to do, wouldn't it? And the first of all, we need to uh, flick it over and uh, bring in Mr. Screwdriver and remove the screws. There we are, and we can now flick it back the right way up, and hopefully the top will uh, lift off. There we are. This is the, uh, the keyboard part. We'll come back to that in a minute. But for now, all the things come out, little back of a little grill for the fan. You can see we've got various things in here. Look, this is, uh, oh, this is the card reader, isn't it? So this could go uh, down onto this side if we wanted to have clearly with that on the front and that on down there, that will give us a card reader at the side. I don't think I'm going to fit the card reader, we'll stick with the metal plate and the ventilation holes. We've also got here, look, uh, we even labelled up cable ties and mounts, obviously for cable management, stuff like that. And we've got here some screws, obviously for holding in the motherboard, that's kind of important. And we've got some instructions for the, uh, uh, to do with the hard drive here. And we can see that mount there, you can see the SSD can go in here and uh, looks like there's also a mount under there for a three and a half inch drive as well as far as I can see. So we've got plenty of, of drive mounting options there. So uh, we now of course need to put in a motherboard and the My64 will take any mini ITX motherboard providing that the CPU, heatsink and other components are no more than 30 millimeters high at the front of the case because clearly it's got a fitter under the keyboard. And because of the fact we haven't got massive ventilation in a case like this, we didn't need it for the early microcomputer, my retro computer recommend you don't use a CPU 
with a TDP of thermal design power greater than 65 watts. So the motherboard I'm going to use here is this one. This is an ASRock J4105 Mini ITX motherboard with an embedded Celeron processor. So when you buy this board, you get the motherboard with the processor pre-fitted and the heatsink also fitted as well. This is a passively cooled board, so it doesn't need a fan. And the specs here to give you the headlines, this has got a Celeron processor, which is a quad-core processor running at 1.5 gigahertz base frequency, bursting to 2.5 gigahertz, and we've got Intel 600 HD graphics. And I'm actually borrowing this motherboard from a silent mini ITX build I showed you on my channel a few months ago, where I fitted it with eight gigabytes of RAM. We've got two four gigabyte sodiums in here. So if you want more information on this board and all its specifications, look back to that video. Oh, and also note it comes with this IO shield. Now, in addition to the motherboard, we're also going to need a drive, which here will be this Samsung Evo 250 gigabyte SSD. And to connect this to the drive carrier in the case, we're going to need a lead with a mini SATA connector, which is that connector there. And you can see it's also got a Molex power connector to use with the power supply we'll be using in this build. And talking of the power supply, we're going to be using this Pico ITX board. This will plug into our mini ITX motherboard. It'll take a 12 volt DC input. This is a 90 watt Pico ITX power supply perfectly sufficient for our needs here. And indeed it's going to be fed from uh, this external power supply, which I think is an 80 watt 12 volt power adapter. So let's take the uh, Pico ITX board and plug it into our motherboard. Let's fit it into the ATX power connector like this goes in there. You will notice this Pico ITX power adapter is 20 pin, not 24 pin like the ATX connector, but we won't need the extra pins to power a board of the, this nature. This is a very low power mini ITX board. You might have noticed if I can find it, here we are. There is an extra four pin power connector coming out of the Pico ITX adapter, but this is to go to a P4 pin on the motherboard. It's got the wrong pins to go in here. You physically can't put it into these pins because it's not designed to go in there. So don't use this particular connector. Next, we'll go back to the case where the motherboard will fit in something like this. In fact, very like this. But before I deal with the motherboard, I want to turn my attention to the, uh, the drive carrier here. So let's get rid of the motherboard and move across to the drive carrier, where, as you can see, there is a SATA data and power connector here. We could just take our SSD and drop it in there like that, push it onto the connector, and that will hold in place. That would be okay, but uh, I don't like the idea of having a, an SSD sort of flopping around on the end of a SATA connector. That's not really mounted. And so I've noticed there are some mounting screws under here or some mounting holes. So what I'm going to do is to remove these screws. There we are. And if you're thinking they were difficult to get out, they were. But hopefully now, yes, this comes apart and we can actually screw in our SSD properly onto the, the screws here. And uh, there we are. Do you ever wish you'd ever started something? And uh, just as an aside, I've noticed this isn't a three and a half inch bay under here. It's just a thing that holds things in place. So in theory, I can now put this back in place in the correct place here, which is uh, going to be there. And I'm going back to put the screws back in. And uh, there we are, after a lot of messing around, we've got our SSD properly mounted and secured in the, in the drive carrier. And then the final thing we need to do is to take our lead for the SSD, the power lead, this is the data lead, which is the one here. This plugs in the mini SATA connector down here, I think, like this, goes in uh, there, like that. And uh, we're all ready now, I think, to fit the motherboard in the case. And to start us off, we're going to take the IO shield and just slot it in something like that. That looks uh, pretty good. And we can now take the motherboard itself, get that out of the way. Maybe I should have fitted that second. Who knows, it's all fine. There's never a perfect way to do anything, is there? Says he, hopefully, is that gonna go in there? Is it line up, get in the back? Yes, that's gone in pretty well. And the screws to go in there, that actually holds in very nicely, actually. So we'll now just take the motherboard screws and uh, put them in. And uh, what I'm doing here is just to put them all in loosely first because we need to 
press the motherboard up against the IO shield at the back, keep it nice and tight. So I've now got them loosely and then I can now tighten them properly. There we are, Mr. Screwdriver enjoyed that and that seems to have worked very well indeed. The motherboard is nicely secured into the case. Next, I think we'll take the, uh, the power jack here and put it through this uh, whole side. That should be fairly straightforward. Just take off the little uh, thingy there. This will uh, poke through and that will go on and that will give us power from our power adapter. That'll go on like that. That's uh, pretty good. We can just route that out of the way, hopefully quite nicely down there. We'll do a bit of cable management in a minute. Uh, we need to connect up our uh, SATA connector for the drive. I think again, we'll think about cables a little bit. Not too much. I'm not going to assess about it. Let's get cabling as neat as we can. Let's put a bit of that out of the way. And the SATA connector will go into the motherboard. Is that the right way round? It never is if you want it to be, is it? No, it's that way round. There we me. There we are. That's clicked in there. And that's going to just tuck out of the way. That's, that's pretty good. We've got to give power to our drive from uh, this Molex here. It's great having a Molex connector in a, a retro build, isn't it? We've got all the different ages of computing going on here. And uh, that, I think, is everything there in terms of the base of the case. So what we can now do is go back to the keyboard. Here it is. And uh, under here, of course, there are more wires. In particular, there are two sets of wires we need to deal with. Let's just... Uh, release them from their bounds for a second. We've got, first of all here, connectors for the uh, power LED and the power switch. There they are. These actually work from the uh, switch on the top of the case here, which is both a switch and a uh, power LED. And of course, there's also a connector here coming from the keyboard itself, which goes onto a USB connector on the motherboard. So if we go back to the motherboard, which has miraculously neatened itself up a bit since we were here last. Those cables have uh, leapt into nicer places. And the first thing we're going to do is to ignore what I've just been talking about and connect in this uh, fan connector for the fan at the back of the uh, case that needs to go into uh, our uh, connector down here on the motherboard, which is the uh, connector there, chassis fan one. And then connectors I was just talking about for the keyboard and the front panel. There is a USB header down here we can use, and there's a front panel headers down here. So if we grab the wires from our keyboard, the positive connection for the power LED goes in here. The negative connection goes in there. And finally, the power switch, if I can find the lead, here it is, goes in like this. And it's worth noting, these are the connections if you're using an ASRock J4105 motherboard. If you're using another type of motherboard, you should check your motherboard's manual for the correct connections. And then finally, we'll go across to the USB 2 headers on this board. We've got a couple of them here. We'll use the single one, which is more convenient. You'll notice at the end, one of the pins isn't a pin, if you see what I mean. And when we put the connector in, you'll see exactly the same thing is going on. One of the uh, potential pins isn't a pin. That's how you know you've got this thing in the right way around. And so with a little bit of a cable tidying here and there, I think we've finished putting this thing together, which is a rather good, isn't it? It's a very interesting mix of the old and the new, isn't it? And so now in theory, keeping the cable routed away from the heatsink is the plan. I can drop the uh, top on here. There's a lot of stuff just to make sure lines up. I'm going to make sure my IO shield lines up and my fan lines up. I can't show you everything at the same time on this. It's going to fit in there at the back. Oh, if you could see what was going on there. There we are. That's gone on, I think, rather nicely. It has. So all we now need to do is to put back in. Look, you can see the back. Look how good the back is. Oh, it's marvellous, Chris. Wonderful. Anyway, we now need to drop in the screws. There we are, they're all in, not too tight because they self-tap into the plastic. And uh, there we are, we have built ourselves a modern retro computer. Greetings, here I am back again. And as you can see, I've now got the My64 all connected up with a monitor. Again, a mix of the old and the new. I've got my trusty 3M ergonomic mouse plugged in around the back along with an HDMI lead and the power is going into the side of the machine. So in theory, we can turn things on like this. Things have come to life. 
The fan, I think, has just come on at the back. The fan was a bit noisy when I first booted this thing up, but I've adjusted it in the BIOS so it's uh, not quite so noisy. And as you can see, the machine is booting, which is a, a great relief. It should now boot into Ubuntu 20.04, which was already installed on the SSD. And uh, here we are. And I just need to uh, log in and I'll put my password in by the magic of filmmaking. There we are. And we can uh, hopefully go to the Ubuntu desktop on the My64. What a, what a fantastic retro computing setup this is. The function keys down the side of the unit are also labelled up and all work. We press say files, we'll get uh, the file manager. There we are. We can adjust the volume using the volume controls. Control the HDMI volume, but that was never intended when they first built uh, this machine. Anyway, there we are. We proved everything works with a mini ITX motherboard running inside the My64 retro PC case. The My64 is a beautiful piece of hardware which perfectly reincarnates an early microcomputer. Now personally I will be taking my J4105 Mini ITX motherboard out of this case, putting it back in the thin client case it was in, because that's better for my purposes. But I have very much enjoyed taking a look at this. I very much like the My64 with its lovely keyboard, full-size cursor keys, always good to see those. And I'm sure that many people will really enjoy building a modern computer inside this case to take them back to the, the days when computing was just a bit more exciting. But now that's it for another video. If you've enjoyed what you see there, please press that like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And I hope to talk to you again very soon.